Section 5.5 is a short section about the greatest common factor and also factoring by a technique called grouping. So first of all, let's think about factoring in general. Consider the expression 5 times the quantity x plus 3. We know that in this expression we can distribute the 5. 5 times x gives us 5x, and 5 times 3 gives us 15. And so if we multiply 5 times the quantity x plus 3, we get 5x plus 15. Factoring is the, rever the reverse of this procedure. So how do we go from 5x plus 15 backwards to 5 times x plus 3? The process involves something called the greatest common factor. So we have to identify what factor do these two terms have in common, and then we have to remove that factor using the distributive property in reverse. So let me give you an example here. In number one, we would like to factor 10x minus 25. So what we need to do is identify the greatest common factor between the number 10 and the number 25. And that greatest common factor is 5. Now the reason for this is because we can express 10x as 5 times 2x minus, and then 25 can be expressed as 5 times 5. And the greatest common factor is this number 5 here. And that can be factored out. And so if we take that common factor of 5 and we pull it out of the parentheses, and so we have to create the parentheses, what we have left over is 2x minus 5. So this is literally just the reverse of the distributive property. So you can see here that we have factored because we took something which used to be a difference, used to be subtraction, and we've changed it into a product. It's now multiplication. And in general, that's what you do when you factor. You change something from sums and differences into products. So in our next example here, we have three terms, and we would like to factor out the greatest common factor. Notice that all three terms have an even coefficient. That means they are all divisible by 2. So if we rewrite this, 4x squared can be thought of as 2 times 2x squared. 2x is the same as 2 times x. And 12 is 2 times 6. And so we can identify the greatest common factor is 2. And if we pull this out, we get 2 times the quantity 2x squared minus x plus 6. Now in the next example, we have a different variable. We have the variable t. And you should also notice that there is a factor of t in each of the terms. Now the coefficients do not have anything in common because the coefficient here is negative 1. But there is a t that we can factor out in every term. So if you pull out that t, you're going to reduce the power of t by 1 in each term. So for example, Negative t cubed can be thought of as negative t times t squared. Positive 3t squared can be thought of as positive t times 3t. And negative 9t can be thought of as negative t times 9. And so we can identify that there is a t in common in each term. So if we factor out that t, we get t times negative t squared plus 3t minus 9. Now this answer is correct. However, it's not the best way to write the answer. 
And the reason is because notice that we still have a leading negative inside the parentheses. We would prefer not to have a leading negative here. So instead of just factoring out a t like we did, what we could have done is we could have factored out a negative t. And if we had done that, we would have negative t. And then inside the parentheses, t squared minus 3t plus 9. So basically, if I choose to pull out the negative, it changes all the signs on the inside to the opposite of what they used to be. Now again, both of these answers are correct, but this one is definitely better. And there are reasons for that moving forward. So anytime you can factor out a leading negative coefficient, you should always aim to do that. Okay, let's move on to a couple more here. So in our next example, we have 15x squared t minus 30xt squared. Notice that the coefficients have a 15 in common as the greatest common factor. And each of these has an x and a t. So our greatest common factor here is 15xt. Now, you can rewrite the problem. 15x squared t is 15xt times x, right? Because x times x would be x squared. And then minus 15xt would be multiplied by 2t in order to get 30xt squared. So we can see that we have a 15xt here and a 15xt here. That is the greatest common factor. And if we pull that out, we get 15xt times x minus 2t. And in our final example, number five here, you look at these two terms and notice that the 3 and the 5 do not have a common factor other than 1. And also x squared and y squared don't share any common factors. However, we do have a leading negative. So in this problem, we could at the very least factor out the negative, which will change the signs. So there's not a whole lot to do in number 5, but we do want to factor out the negative anytime we can. And, and specifically, we do that when we have a leading negative. So our next technique for factoring is a method called grouping. Now, typically, when you're factoring using the method of grouping, you will have a polynomial that has four terms, such as this one here. And notice that there is not a greatest common factor among all four terms. However, if we break this problem down into smaller groups, we can identify common factors in each one of those groups. So in the first group here, we can see that x is a common factor. And if we factor out that x, we get x times x minus y. And in the second group, we can see that they have a 7 in common. And if we factor out a positive 7, what we'll have left over is x minus y. So what we did was two smaller greatest common factor problems. But now if you look at this, you should notice that x minus y appears twice. And that x minus y is a common factor among the two terms that we have left here. And so I can factor out this x minus y. And if we do that, what we have left over is x plus 7.
Now, if you're ever unsure that you have factored something correctly or not, you can always check your answer by multiplying. So if we take our answer and multiply it out, notice that what we get is x times x is x squared, x times 7 is 7x, negative y times x is negative xy, and negative y times 7 is negative 7y. And although this is in a different order than the original problem, you can see that this is the same as this. So our answer here is correct. So for our next problem, notice that we once again have four terms. But notice that the first two terms don't have a greatest common factor. So what I can do in this situation is I can switch two terms around. If we do that, we get a cubed plus a minus 5 minus 5a squared. And now if we group these two terms and these two terms, out of the first two terms, we can pull out an a, and if we do that, we have a squared plus 1 left over. And out of the second set of terms, we can pull out a negative 5, and if we pull out a negative 5, we end up with 1 plus a squared left over. Now, just as a brief comment here, a squared plus 1 and 1 plus a squared are the same because it's addition. So if you want, you can rewrite it so that it looks a little bit nicer. But notice now that we can pull that a squared plus 1 out. And if we do that, what we have left over is a minus 5. So the whole point here in this problem is that sometimes you have to reorder the terms so that you have something in common to factor out. So for our final example, it's very similar to the previous two. Notice that there is no common factor among all four terms. So I will group the first two terms together and I will group the last two terms together. And out of the first two terms, we can clearly fact out factor out x squared, and if we do that, we get x plus 3. And out of the second two terms, notice that there is nothing in common between x and 3. So when that happens, what I can say is I can factor out a 1, because 1 times x plus 3 would still be x plus 3. It's valuable to write this down because now you can identify that you have this common factor of x plus 3. And that factor, x plus 3, can be taken out. And then what we have left over here is x squared plus 1. So this concludes the section on two factoring techniques, greatest common factor, and factoring by grouping. Let's get some practice.